a construction company in Lynchburg, Virginia, were taking a job in conjunction with Habitat for Humanity to build a house. The foreman was not expecting to only have a week to complete the job. That means roofing, plumbing, electric, everything. The people that were moving into the house were really counting on the house being completed on time. The foreman had everything planned out. Everyone had an assignment and the volunteers were working hard. A few days into the project, the foreman realized there was no tiler. The person who was scheduled to do the tiling couldn't make it, and none of the volunteers knew how to tile. That morning when the group gathered for prayer, a request was made. God, we need a good tiler if this project is going to be completed on time. Later that day, the foreman saw a homeless man hanging around the job site. A few of the volunteers had spoken with him. His name was Tim and he was living in a homeless shelter down the street. The foreman asked him, by any chance do you know anything about tiling? Oh yes, that's what I used to do for a living, the man said. Within minutes, Tim was tiling the bathroom floor doing amazing work. He worked late into the night and came back the next day. The house was finished on time. There was a ribbon cutting ceremony. A few awards were handed out, the last one being given to Tim. After Tim received the award, the foreman asked Tim if he would like a permanent job working full time on his crew. Tim was so happy he rejoiced. Tim was an answer to the foreman's prayer, and Tim got help by helping others. One small prayer provided extraordinary results for two situations. Tim meeting the foreman was truly a divine appointment. Hi, and welcome to His Living Word. I am Adam Morsh. After seeing how effective prayer can be, let's dive a little deeper and ask, what is prayer? Why do we pray? And how to pray? Many people question, if God already knows our thoughts, why should we pray, especially if we're not going to change God's mind in anything? Let's see if we can answer that question. What is prayer? Oxford Dictionary defines prayer as a solemn request for help or expression of thanks addressed to God or an object of worship. The first part of that statement I think most people would agree with. However, the second part about praying and worshiping an object, that is black and white sin. Prayer is our means of communication with God. First and foremost, prayer is the privilege of communicating with God. We do this by praising Him, by confessing our sins before Him, by thanking Him and asking Him for our needs and desires. Prayer is communion with our Creator. When we pray, we engage in the loving fellowship with the Maker of heaven and earth. Prayer is an interacting with God, most frequently through a spontaneous, individual or collective, unorganized form of petitioning and or thanking. It is giving our attention to God in a two-way spiritual relationship where we talk to God and also listen to Him. Just like our earthly parents, our Heavenly Father wants to hear from us and talk to us as well. When we pray, our Heavenly Father listens to us and then speaks to us in forms of thoughts, spiritual feelings, scripture, the actions of others, or even coincidences that are just too overly coincidental that the outcome was most likely directed or orchestrated by God. Some people like to call them God incidences. We are instructed by God to listen to Him by being silent before Him. Be still before the Lord and wait patiently for Him. Fret not yourself over the one who prospers in his way, over the man who carries out evil devices. Psalm 37, seven. Be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the nations. I will be exalted in the earth. Psalm 46.10 Prayer is a way of discerning God's will. The Spirit sent Paul and Barnabas on their first missionary journey. Now there were in the church at Antioch prophets and teachers, Barnabas, Simeon who was called Niger, Lucius of Cyrene, Menaean, a lifelong friend of Herod the Tetrarch, and Saul. While they were worshiping the Lord and fasting, the Holy Spirit said, Set apart for me Barnabas and Saul for the work to which I have called them. Then after fasting and praying, they laid their hands on them and sent them off. Acts 13, 1-3 Solomon requested wisdom and knowledge from God. Give me now wisdom and knowledge to go out and come in before this people. For who can govern this people of yours which is so great? God answered Solomon, 
because this was in your heart and you have not asked for possessions, wealth, honor, or the life of those who hate you, and have not even asked for long life, but have asked for wisdom and knowledge for yourself, that you may govern my people whom I have made you king, wisdom and knowledge are granted to you. I will also give you riches, possessions, and honor, such as none of the kings had who were before you, and none after you shall have the like. Second Chronicles 1, 10 through 12 the institution of prayer is something that can be found in all world religions. It's who people are praying to that really matters. Other religions pray to Mohammed, Buddha, Moses, polytheistic and pagan gods, but the only God that can hear and answer your prayer is the God of the Bible. Praying to any God except the triune God of the Bible is sin. Why should we pray? Many people wonder this question, if God is omniscient, all-knowing, and knows your thoughts before you even have them, what is the point of prayer? What is the point of telling God something he already knows? If someone comes up to you on the street and asks you why we pray, telling them because God told us to is not the answer the truth seeker was searching for. So let's look at why we pray. Number one is because God has told us to pray. God tells us to pray without ceasing. Rejoice always. Pray without ceasing. In everything give thanks, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. 1 Thessalonians 5, 16-18 Do not be anxious about anything, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving let your requests be made known to God. Philippians 4, 6 and he told them a parable to the effect that they ought always to pray and not lose heart. Luke 18, 1. Number 2. Jesus prayed. Jesus didn't just pray, but it was a priority for him to stay close to the Father. Jesus prayed approximately 38 times throughout the Gospels. Jesus made communion with God his first priority in life, and his approach to prayer was intentional and disciplined. If the Son of God was disciplined in his prayer life, how much more should we be? But he would withdraw to desolate places and pray. Luke 5.16 and rising very early in the morning while it was still dark, he departed and went out to a desolate place, and there he prayed. And Simon and those who were with him searched for him, and they found him and said to him, Everyone's looking for you. And he said to them, Let us go on to the next towns, that I may preach there also, for that is why I came out. Mark one thirty-five to 38 Jesus prayed before raising Lazarus from the dead. So they took the stone away. And Jesus lifted up his eyes and said, Father, I thank you that you have heard me. I knew that you always hear me, but I said this on account of the people standing around, that they may believe that you sent me. John 11:41 to 42 Jesus prayed that the Father would be glorified. Now is my soul troubled, and what shall I say? Father, save me from this hour, but for this purpose I have come to this hour. Father, glorify your name. Then a voice came from heaven, I have glorified it, and I will glorify it again. John 12, 27-28 The entire 17th chapter of the Gospel of John is a prayer from Jesus to the Father for his followers once he is taken away. He prays that they will be kept, sanctified, unified, and glorified. Matthew Henry Commentary Immediately following the Last Supper, Jesus retreated to a garden to pray. The Gospel of Matthew and Mark identify this garden as Gethsemane. Jesus was accompanied by three of his apostles, Peter, John, and James. He asked them to stay awake and pray. He prayed a series of three prayers. Then Jesus went with them to a place called Gethsemane, and he said to his disciples, Sit here while I go over there and pray. And taking with him Peter and the two sons of Zebedee, he began to be sorrowful and troubled. Then he said to them, My soul is very sorrowful, even to death. Remain here and watch with me. And going a little further, he fell on his face and prayed, saying, My father, if it be possible, let this cup pass from me. Nevertheless, not as I will, but as you will. And he came to the disciples and found them sleeping. And he said to Peter, So could you not watch with me one hour? Watch and pray that you may not enter into temptation. The spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. Again, for the second time, he went away and prayed, My father, if this cannot pass unless I drink it, your will be done. 
and again he came and found them sleeping for their eyes were heavy so leaving them again he went away and prayed for the third time saying the same words again matthew twenty six thirty six to forty four luke's account of jesus praying in the garden offers a little different detail and he withdrew from them about a stone's throw and knelt down and prayed saying father if you are willing remove this cup from me nevertheless not my will but yours be done and there appeared to him an angel from heaven strengthening him and being in agony he prayed more earnestly and his sweat became like great drops of blood falling down to the ground luke twenty two forty one to forty four lastly jesus prayed when he was on the cross jesus prayed three short prayers on the cross that were recorded amongst the three synoptic gospels and jesus said father forgive them they know not what they do and they cast lots to divide his garments. Luke 23:34. And about the ninth hour, Jesus cried out with a loud voice, saying, Eli, Eli, lama sabachthani, that is, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Matthew 27:46. Then Jesus, calling out with a loud voice, said, Father, into your hands I commit my spirit. And having said this, he breathed his last. Luke. 2346 other reasons to pray god gives good gifts to those who pray prayer won't change god's mind but prayer changes us and what we pray for when our desires match up with god's will is perfect harmony and god will usually grant those requests if you then who are evil know how to give good gifts to your children how much more will your father who is in heaven give good things to those who ask him matthew seven eleven. you lust and do not have so you commit murder you are envious and cannot obtain so you fight and quarrel you do not have because you do not ask you ask and do not receive because you ask with the wrong motives so that you may spend it on your pleasures James 4, 2 through 3. Prayer strengthens us from temptation. In the Garden of Gethsemane, Jesus told his disciples to watch and pray so that you will not fall into temptation. Matthew twenty six forty one. Submit yourselves therefore to God. Resist the devil and he will flee from you. James 4, 7. Prayer helps us to give and receive forgiveness, as well as strengthen us against temptation. The Lord's Prayer And forgive us our sins, for we ourselves also forgive everyone who is indebted to us, and do not lead us into temptation. Luke 11.4 Prayer is a way to praise and worship God, and give thanks for His every blessing. As we look back, we bless Him for His faithfulness. In our present, we praise Him for His salvation and His loving kindness. For the future, we thank Him that one day He will present us before His glorious presence without fault and with great joy. Now to Him who is able to keep you from stumbling and to present you blameless before the presence of His glory with great joy, to the only God, our Savior, through Jesus Christ our Lord, be glory, majesty, dominion, and authority before all time, now and forever. Amen. Jude 1, 24-25 Now that we have defined what prayer is, and we looked at why to pray, now let us look at how the Bible tells us to pray. There are four different ways we pray. We pray to praise God. We pray to ask God to provide our needs, which includes forgiveness. We ask God for what others need, and we pray in thanksgiving for what God has already given and done. There is only one place in Scripture that Jesus teaches us how to pray. This is the Lord's Prayer. It is recorded in both Matthew and Luke, but only Matthew gives a complete set of instructions. And when you pray, you must not be like the hypocrites, for they love to stand and pray in the synagogues and at the street corners, that they may be seen by others. Truly, I say to you, they have received their reward. Matthew 6, 5. But when you pray, go into your room and shut the door and pray to your Father who is in secret, and your Father who sees in secret will reward you. Matthew 6, 6. And when you pray, do not heap up empty phrases as the Gentiles do. For they think that they will be heard for their many words. 
Do not be like them, for your Father knows what you need before you ask Him. Pray then like this. Matthew 6, 7-9 Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. The first three statements, also known as thy petitions, pray for God's glory. Hallowed be thy name, your name, is referencing the holiness of God's name. We are asking that his name be revered on earth. Your kingdom come, or thy kingdom come, is requesting for God's guidance and rule in our lives. What does God do in his kingdom? He rules completely. So we are expressing our desire to see God's kingdom rule on earth just as he rules in heaven. To quote Elmer Towns in his book, How to Pray, In other words, we tell God that each day we will again submit our lives to his rule on earth just as he rules in heaven. Your will or thy will be done. When we pray this part of the prayer, we are surrendering or yielding our lives to the Lord. We must yield our lives every day in everything that we do to God. Just as Paul says in Corinthians, So, whether you eat or drink, or whatever you do, do all to the glory of God. 1 Corinthians 10.31 Paul says this again in Colossians, And whatever you do in word or deed, do everything in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through Him. Colossians 3.17 On earth as it is in heaven, give us this day our daily bread. Here is the only part of the prayer where we petition for our own needs. Here, when we ask for bread, we are asking for the needs we have to sustain us. Money to pay bills, food to eat, medicine if we are sick, a car to get to work, etc. By praying this, we are recognizing our dependence on God. It is important to notice that when we are praying for our daily bread, we are praying for something made on earth. We are not asking God to perform a supernatural miracle and provide manna from heaven. There are some people, mainly proponents of the prosperity gospel, who would want us to believe that we can demand things from God. Name it and claim it, they call it. However, God does not act like a vending machine. Furthermore, when we ask God for our daily bread, we are asking God to provide our needs for each day. When we ask God for our daily bread, we are bringing God into our daily struggle for survival. So when God gives us our daily bread, we need to recognize that it comes from Him and use it to glorify His name. It's good to pray for our necessities, but nowhere in Scripture does it tell us to pray for luxuries. Asking God for daily bread is asking God for enough to get through one day. The final three petitions in the Lord's Prayer are known as us petitions because it deals with our spiritual lives. Elmer Towns, the co-founder of Liberty University, the largest Christian university in the U.S., makes the statement that every aspect of Christian living is incorporated in the last three final petitions of the Lord's Prayer and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. In this fifth petition of the Lord's Prayer, we are seeking forgiveness. This is not a salvation type of forgiveness. Jesus already completed that on the cross, and you are only saved once. But this type of forgiveness is a daily acknowledgement that we did wrong, and is a petition to ask to be restored to God's fellowship, just as we forgive debts of others and restore them to fellowship. It is important to notice that this part of the Lord's Prayer is the only part where we must bring something to the table. We can't earn our salvation regardless of what we do, but we are required or called to do certain things, and forgiving is one of them. For if you forgive others their trespasses, your Heavenly Father will also forgive you. But if you do not forgive others their trespasses, neither will your Father forgive your trespasses. And lead us not into temptation. This doesn't ask God not to tempt us because God cannot be tempted by evil, nor does he tempt anyone. In this petition, we simply ask God to keep us from the sin that will overwhelm us. We are asking for victory. But deliver us from evil. The last part of the Lord's Prayer is to protect us from Satan. Some believe this is to be a general evil because the King James just said to deliver us from evil, but the New King James Version makes it clearer and says deliver us from the evil one. That completes the Lord's Prayer. We've broken down every part of the prayer. 
it is okay to say the Lord's Prayer as a prayer, but we should always be mindful of what we pray. And when you pray, do not heap empty phrases as the Gentiles do, for they think they will be heard for their many words. The Lord's Prayer is meant to be a model of how we should pray, how we should address God, and what we should pray for. Therefore, confess your sins to one another and pray for one another so that you may be healed. The effective prayer of a righteous man can accomplish much. James 5.16 The reason why the prayer of a righteous man will accomplish more than an unrighteous person is because he will be praying for things that are in line with God's will, not selfish and vain ambitions. In conclusion, I hope that you got something out of this and it will help strengthen and deepen your prayer life. If you don't know what to pray, be honest and tell God you don't know what to pray. And sometimes sitting in silence is the best prayer of all. Thank you for watching. And please remember, if you got anything out of this video, to hit the thumbs up and subscribe because it really helps get the video in front of other eyes. Thank you for listening and God bless.